Welcome back to Intentional Bible Study with Morel. Um, today we're going to cover Ephesians 1 um, verses 15 through 23 coming from the NIV. And as you know, we've been in the started in the book of Ephesians trying to start a series in the book of Ephesians. As I said before, don't quote me if we were finished the whole book of Ephesians, but we're going to, you know, look at a, a good bit of this um, scriptures at the chapter of a book of Ephesians but we have covered um portion um of Ephesians already so make sure you go listen to that if you haven't listened to the first part of Ephesians 1 but today we're going to cover and, and, and it's, it's about thanksgiving and prayer um Paul is talking um uh, thanksgiving and prayer in this portion of scripture um, verses 15 through 23. So let's begin to read. Uh, it should not take me long. So uh, let's let's go. Let's get into it. Uh, for this reason, verse 15 says, For this reason, ever since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all God's people. Now, Paul is talking to the church in Ephesus. He says, I have not stopped giving thanks for you. So Paul said, let's, let's, let's make sure, let's go back to verse 15 and read that part again. It said, for this reason, Paul is saying, ever since I heard about your faith, talking about the church in Ephesus, Paul said, ever since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all God's people, in verse 16, Paul said, I have not stopped giving thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. Paul is saying, ever since I heard about your faith in the Lord, it, it just made me just say, oh, wow, I have a, you know, um, I don't know if you ever been like in a foreign place. Say if you um, just say you're going to a foreign place, say you're from the U.S., and you meet somebody in Amsterdam. And now when you see somebody from your other country, from the country that you're from or from the, the city that you're from and you're in Amsterdam and, and you say, oh, I'm from the U.S. And you're like, oh, I'm from the U.S. too. And, and, and you automatically just get to a place. Oh, we, we know each other. And maybe you guys don't even stay near each other in the U.S. That person might stay on the West Coast and you stay on the East Coast. But when you're in a foreign country, you all feels like your your brother and sister. You all you feel like, oh, we're, 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 we're family. We know we're all from the, the U.S. or whatever. So Paul is saying ever since I heard about your faith now Paul talking to the church in Ephesus he was saying in verse 16 I have not stopped giving thanks for you he was saying I remember you in my prayers like because you, you're my brother and sister in Christ so I, I'm giving thanks to you and re I'm remembering you in my prayers and in verse 17 Paul says I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ the glorious Father may give you give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so paul is even praying and asking the lord to give them wisdom then the word wisdom the definition of wisdom maybe you know already know the definition because you're very smart and i know you're you, everybody that's tuning in and that's listening is probably very smart and they already know what wisdom is but i'm going to give you the definition of wisdom not because you ask, because I just want to help somebody that maybe don't know. So the definition of wisdom is the quality of having experience, knowledge, and good judgment. The quality of being wise. So the word wisdom, let's, let's give you the definition again. I want to make sure you heard it. The quality of having experience knowledge and good judgment the quality of being wise now the part that i want you to focus on in that definition is knowledge and good judgment so paul is asking the lord in verse 17 as we read let's read verse 17 again it says i keep asking that the god of our lord jesus christ the glorious father may give you the spirit 
of wisdom. He's saying, I, I, I'm praying that the Lord will give you knowledge and good judgment, that you will have knowledge and good judgment. Amen. That's so important to have knowledge and good judgment when you're in the Lord. Amen. You need to have knowledge and you need to have good judgment because that's going to be people going to tempt you. That's going to be people that's going to come your way and that you don't know whether they're Christian or not Christian. So you need to have good judgment. You need to have discernment. Amen. So the next part of Paul is praying. He said, may, may give you, uh, the glorious Father may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation. So the, now you already probably know what the word revelation means. But as always, I want to give you the definition. The definition of uh <laughs> The definition of revelation is an act of revealing to view or making known something that is revealed. Amen. An act of revealing to view or making known something that is revealed. So that's the revelation. An act or revealing to view or making known something that is revealed. So so Paul is praying for wisdom and revelation for the church in Ephesus. He said, let's, let's read the whole verse 17. I know we read some most of it, but let's read the whole verse. And it says, I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit. Give you the what? What spirit? The spirit of wisdom of what? Knowing I mean, the knowledge and good judgment. When I get here, Paul said, I pray that God give you the spirit of knowledge and good judgment, that you will make good judgment in this faith walk. You will make good judgment. You know, you know this is a this is a not a, a short walk. This is a long walk. Amen. This is not just something you just get say one day and that's it. But you need to have. You need to have wisdom when you get saved. You need to know how to walk this walk because it would not always be easy. It would get hard. It would get challenges. So you need to have good judgment. Amen. You need to have good judgment in the faith. And then Paul also said, uh, may give you the spirit. May God give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation. You know, the revelation just kind of God will reveal things to you as you grow in Christ. God will reveal things as you learn about the word of God. God will c continue to reveal things as you grow in, in the Lord. Amen. And the rest of the part of the scripture says so that you may know him better. So Paul is saying this is one of the ways that you would know him better by having the spirit of wisdom and revelation. Amen. About having uh, the the wisdom, having the knowledge and also things that God would reveal to you that maybe other people don't see right now. Maybe other people don't see in the scripture. You know, sometimes that can be three people can read the Bible or read the same scripture and get three different things but even though it's all still one word of God but one person might see this part and the other person might see this part and the other person might see that part so God revealed things to them differently even though don't take the scripture out of context you know we, we, we don't believe in taking the scripture out of context you know there's a lot of preachers a lot of a lot of speakers or communicators in this world now that taking scriptures and putting it where they want to put it but they're taking it out of context amen let's go to verse 18 it says paul says i pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you now paul is saying let's let's read verse 18 let's read part let's read it Let's read. Let's go back and read verse 18 again. It says, I pray that the eyes of your heart, Paul said, I pray that at the eyes of your heart, not not your eyes, but the eyes of your heart may be enlightened. Now, I know that you already know the meaning of enlightened, but guess what? I'm not giving you the meaning of enlightened. I want to give you the similar words for enlightened. The similar words for enlightened, enlightened is inform and man you can use it that way if you don't say enlighten you can say inform you can say aware you can say knowledgeable 
and you can say wise. These are some of the similar words for enlightened. So when we look at verse 18 and we read verse 18, we can say it like this. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be informed. Amen. Or we can say, I pray that the eyes of your heart may be aware. Or we can say, I pray that the eyes of your heart may be knowledgeable. This is what Paul is praying. He's, he's, he's praying for them. He's, he's saying, I want you guys to be informed. I want you guys to have wisdom. I want you guys to have revelation. Amen. So, so Paul is so happy to know that that these people have shared their faith and when he know that they have shared their faith he could it said in verse 16 let's just go back to verse 16 um it says i have not stopped giving thanks for you paul said i have not stopped giving thanks for you remembering you in my prayers amen you know when somebody first come to christ uh, a lot of times sometimes that person don't have guidance when they go to a you no know, um sometimes the person don't have guidance. They don't know what to do next. They don't know. And so the best thing to do is keep that person in prayer. Because when they first get saved, you know, sometimes they're doing things off of zeal. They just on fire, but they don't have no wisdom. Yeah, man, they just doing things. They don't have no knowledge. So we have to make sure we keep that person in prayer and, and always, uh, giving that person information, giving that person knowledge, praying with that person, helping that person grow as they just, you know, became new in Christ. Amen. They're still a babe. So they they have some growing things that they, they're going to go through. They're going to go up. They're going to have some time they up and they're going to have some times that they're down. Even when you've been saved for a long time, you still going to have ups and downs, but you should know how to get through. Because you should have the wisdom, but a person that just got saved might not have that kind of wisdom. Amen. So Paul said, I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened. I pray that I pray that the eyes of your heart may be wise. Amen. In order that you may know the hope to which he has called you. Now, so that now that you know the hope to which he has called you now let's read the rest of the verse of 18 says the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people verse 19 20 marie and in his and in and his incomparably great power for us believe that power is the same as the mighty strength verse 20 says he asserted when he raised christ from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms verse 21 says far above all rule and authority power and dominion and every name that is invoked not only in the present age but also in the one to come amen verse 22 and God placed all things under his feet and appointed him to be head over everything for the church. Verse 23, which is, which is his body, the fullness of him who feels everything in every way. Now let's go back to verse 22 real quick. And then we're, we're, we're closing on this. We're closing on verse 22. It says, and God placed all things under his feet. Who, who are we talking about? We're talking about Jesus. He, he placed everything under his feet. And appointed him to be head over everything for the church. So the question that I have for you today. And I know you already know the answer because you're very smart. You've been, you've been in Bible study years and years. You've been studying the word for years and years. But for the people that maybe just got to Christ, just learn about the word of God, just still in the, the babe stage. Who is the head of the church? Now, please don't answer it so fast. Please don't answer it so fast because I already know you know the answer. But who is the head of the church? Now, some people might believe that elder is the head of the church. But I got to tell you, your elder is not the head of the church. 
Some people believe that because, you know, called on the elder for prayer, called on your elder. But the elder is not the head of the church. Now, some people believe their deacon is the head of the church because the deacon, he takes care of the church. He turns on the lights and he takes out the trash. He keeps the yard clean. He might open up the building sometime. But I'm just trying to tell you. Your deacon is not the head of the church. Now, some people believe, oh, my pastor is the head of the church. Well, I got a, I got an answer for you. He's not. Your pastor is not the head of the church. Jesus is. Because when we look at verse 22, it says, And God placed all things under his feet, talking about the Lord Jesus, and appointed him to be head of over everything for the church now i want you to make sure you highlight that part that he is head over everything for the church that that all means he's 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 the head of this part of the church he's head over everything for the church so the question is and the answer for that question is who is the head of the church and the answer is jesus christ amen not your pastor, not your deacon, not your apostle, not your overseer, not your ursha, head ursha, not the security, whoever else that you have on your team is not the head of the church. It is God's church. It is Jesus Christ's church. He is the head over everything for the church. Amen. 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 So. That's all I got, you guys. God bless you. See you at the next Bible study. Remember, be intentional, live intentional, and stay intentional. Go and be the church. God bless.